Hello everybody, welcome back to K2SE, Fantastic Mr. Ghost. I have an Astrometrics build ready to go. Oh my gosh, I, there is just no way that I could build this on screen. So it would take me about two hours and then I walk away in frustration. <laughs> There's so much crap that you have to deal with here. Now, another thing too, I was looking ahead and, well, I was looking for, at recipes and stuff. And then I come across the, I think it's, yeah, here. They have even more of these cards. So there's infrared observation UV. That's what we have here. Then we take all three of those and make astrometric. But then there's microwave, x-ray, gravitational, gravity, radio gamma and then there's dark matter negative pressure dark energy micro black hole Ooh, that's cool zero point oh neat oh and then we have an asteroid belt probe and then an asteroid belt probe data so this gets even more crazy as we go now i don't know how to future proof this <laughs> i'm just trying to get through this so we could get you know the rocket survivability and all that go going Oh, I hope you enjoyed my little montage in the front of the video here. I had a lot of fun doing that. Oh, I, I sent over beryllium to the planet, or to the novice orbit here, because we're going to need beryllium for this build. I got to get over here eventually and uh, beef it up here. Yeah, and I got to uh, mine some more uranium. Now, there's a uranium planet that I'd like to get the core fragments from, do the U-238 and 3035, and then shoot that to other planets for power so uh, it's uh infinite you know source of power really or well fuel for the uh reactors so that's running there um okay so on novice here we go right here so you saw the rockets in the uh thing my first part here i'm gonna tear these commutators up i don't need them and so i have oh here's a coal train we need coal for the data or for that frame to collect the light. So I'm collecting coal here now. It's almost done. Getting close. I have a plastic rocket now and a glass rocket because I need glass and plastic for the pipes up in space, the space pipes. So I decided, okay, I'm just going to have to do this here and send it up. Now it's so much easier to do the any landing pad with name glass launched on cargo full. Done. I like that. And you know, we're, oh, and we're going to need glass for astrometrics too and other things going forward. Plastic we need for science related stuff as well as the pipe. And then the coal. Now, I do need coal up in space. It's so much nicer. I don't have to worry about the, um, those things. What do you call it? The, uh, life support. Yeah. So I don't have to worry about that now because I have coal and, and, you know, of course I can get water up in any. Uh, when that ice water ice runs out hopefully we'll have the ability to bring some more now there is a i think there's a way to make it from cryonite but i'll have to check i think there's a recipe for it but i do have the rocket set up with water so whatever just bring the water up and you know we don't go through much life support anyway but it's nice now i'm able to stay up in space a lot longer now uh lithium rocket one lithium rocket going up because we need that for the this the uh, fuel for our little spaceship that we got. And then this is the space belt here. What's kind of cool is that this, you, so when I'm loading a rocket, what I've, what I'm doing now, and I, I realized I had two commoners here, I only need one, but they don't take power, so it's okay. So what I did was I looked at the recipe and then I determined what's, and then I look at the stack size. And it turns out that the recipes are working out based on the stack size so it's 50 50 for this one here uh the motors and the low density structures they stack to 50. well the motors require or the belt space belt requires two motors one lds so i took that information divided it out and it worked out perfectly so i'm loading 16,500 motors for the space belt and 8250 for the low density structures. And then when it came to the space science, it requires five stones. So if you divide that out, it's 10. 
and it takes one space science or I mean a uh, uh, rocket fuel solid and it's so that's one you know one or ten so it worked out to be perfect for the rocket loading I need 12,500 stone and 2,500 rocket fuel of the solid form now there could be inconsistencies based on the loading because it may overrun a little bit so you still need a I still need to sense off the transmitter and I may need to make determinations of if something goes empty then I send the rocket so these accommodators here are filters they're just filtering out what I want from the rocket because it's going to screw up what happens is the barrels when they start getting moved around then all these inserters are going to start um, all the filter inserters are going to go or well mini loaders they're going to start having the barrel on there and I don't want that so I learned from my, mis my um, well, I didn't know that was going to happen until I set it all up. So now I got, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do the filter stuff here. Now, uh, for some reason, the everything command um, wildcard is working here. I tried the each, but it didn't like it. So I'm going to give it a whirl. So if any, if everything is zero, so if I have a zero. And I think that's, I think it's taking into consideration all signals. It'll send out a green signal and then this will launch. So I'm gonna test that out. Now on this one here, I don't need, uh, the uh, I have a pad with efficiency module only for science. This is the only thing we need it for is science, the um, utility. So launch on cargo full novice orbit. Okay, and that's it. That's all I need. So I don't even need a decider. I'm going to pull this out of here, actually. Uh, I think I might as well just do it now. I don't need a green signal for that. Um, this one here, I do. And believe it or not, all this worked out well, too. So the, based on the recipe, it actually divided out really nicely. Uh, 8,300 on the prod. 16,600 on the uranium-238 and 13,200 on the vulcanite, vulcanite block. And like I said, we got glass and plastic and coal. So what I'm gonna do is the more, if I need more rockets, which I will, uh, I'm gonna copy this whole thing. I'm gonna paste it down here and then I'll be able to load more rockets because we're gonna need additional products to go up in space. I worked on a few things here. Um, I think I got this thing finally balanced out here. So I'm getting, I'm capitalizing on the free oil and the coal and check it out look at this heavy oil 18 189 189 92 so this uh the light oil ran it actually took light oil and brought it down to make rocket fuel so you know i'm getting use out of it so that's a good thing uh 92 000 left in there and then oh i t i did uh, instead of venting the heavy oil i might as well make lube out of it right so i might you know what i might have to do I think I might do a pump here. And if the heavy oil is like, say above 100,000, then I can make the lube here. Because really I want the heavy oil. But the lube is obviously, we need lube for the cosmic water. That's why it's important. So I was like, well, why am I vent, why vent it? Make lube, you know? Now I wanna move, I think I'm gonna move these machines up here and then I can prod them up and put a beacon down and then I'll put a big tank in here. But this was just a quick, you know thing i just threw it in there so yeah i really like the core mining um it's not it it helps it saves a lot of resources and as our mining prod goes up like i said this will become even more viable but right now it's kind of yeah we got 50 percent prod the higher the prod goes the more this thing will crank because we do have a prod bar on it so that's a good thing um but yeah if we can get up a uh, mining prod up to like a hundred you know holy crap we're gonna be cranking so pretty much that would run the whole base. And then we can do multiple um, core mining on the planet. And the, even though it's diminished returns, I think, the, and I'm hoping that this is the case. I'm pretty sure the prod will override, will offset the diminishing returns the higher that mining prod goes. So up here, uh, I reworked the modules a little bit. And what I'm going to do is break this apart. I I did a build um, of the electronic components. Finally got that done. And... I'm going to be training the electronic components and all the other stuff just to make the, the modules. So I'll just have a, a build of modules for prod one, speed one, 
efficiency one, all separate builds, one, you know, I'm not going to combine it like I am here. This was just so we can get up and running, you know. And then I added more machines to the lithium because we're going to need that in mass now. So I think I doubled this build or more. And then I added another lithium chloride bill um, machine. And I got speed and prod and all that good stuff. Speed and prod there. So it's three, 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 two. And that seems to, I think I can add one more machine to this uh, build here. Wait a minute, is it three, three, three? Oh, three. Yeah, so that's fine. I'm going to leave it the way it is then. Okay, so down here, way down here, all the way over here. There we go. So here's the hub. And here is the electronics components. There we go. So by doing this, uh, I will be able to feed all the modules. And, you know, not all the those sciences won't be running all in tandem. You know, it, it some will sometimes it'll like one will run and sometimes the other won't, you know, whatever. Now, when it comes to robot attrition up in space, uh, if we click on here, I already have plastic and I already have glass. So I need to send up this. I need to send silicon up to novice orbit. And I figure that um, the robot attrition isn't terrible. You know, I, I started, no I think I lost like a couple bots here and there. It gets bad though. And I don't, there's no way to increase robot attrition, you know, make it better where you don't lose as many bots. So in order to keep the, the bots from, you know, depleting to zero here because right now i have 54 or 94 i may have lost a couple i don't know i'm not sure i'll have to keep an eye on it but every time and now so every time i lose a bot i want to do the same thing like that, that i'm doing in the hub where i replenish the bot supply and since i have plastic and glass i need to make the electronic components because if we go over here i got the robot frame here oh and i gotta get batteries up here so, sulfur, oh crap, I'll have to, mm, man, that sucks, because uh, sulfuric acid, iron and copper, I don't have sulfuric acid. Oh, I could shoot sulfuric acid up here too, then make the batteries up here. So that's for robot attrition up, on, you know, in, in the orbits. And also, you know, well, down on the planet, I can do it easily. So anyway, so that's the scoop. I do have to go back to uh, Cornetto and work on the beryllium trains and I got to get the power uh, squared away there. I have to tap another um, sulfuric acid, or I have to do another uranium pro um, uh, mine. Now, I do have a planet where its primary resource is uranium, right here, Landia. And what I want to do here, you can see that it's a uranium thing, uranium core. What I want to do is mine this. You need sulfuric acid. Plop a core mining drill down. You need sulfuric acid. Well, we got water, and we do have oil on this planet. It's a small planet, though. So there's a MERS site. I think we have, yeah, oil, oil, oil. Where are you? Here it is right here, crude oil. It's not much, but you know, here's more here, 2.8 mil. So as long as I have oil and water, I can make sulfuric acid, right? Now, what I'm assuming is that I'll get some core fragments that are general, and you could break them down into coal, iron, copper, you know, all that rare metals. And that way I can get the iron from that. In, and it would be infinite. There's some barrel here. Now, I could launch a rocket from here, you know, with barrel. I don't know. I don't know if I want to do a rocket. Well, I could do a rocket here. So, yeah, it's pretty good. pretty good barrel on this planet. I mean, it's not much. But, yeah, this is where I want to go to get infinite uranium, you know. Let's go back here. Okay, let's... Oh, so I redid the space base. It's all done. The space base is completely rebuilt. Better than ever. Ooh, something's running here. Oh, I think I'm making belt. Did that just go in there? No, it came out. Yeah. What do we got in here? 9,955. Okay. Okay. So um, I come to find out that if these two... I, I don't know if it's... I think it's probably all machines... But if you do have them too close, the inputs and outputs will mix. And it was reflecting in the pipe. And it shouldn't happen that way, but it does, whatever. I think it's a factorial thing. So, yay. Um, I had to spread them out and redo them. But it wasn't that big of a deal. So, that being said, 
Um, once I did that, cause, oh yeah, I had a problem. I couldn't connect a pipe. I think it was to the one of these. I don't know. I jogged these pipes over because I terminated the 25 degree cooling fluid or the thermal fluid. So this is the um, meter. And what I want is 5,000 in here. It's 5,000. Right now, there's 5,700 in there. Because I had a bunch of return, you know, after the fact. So we've got the minus 10. And then that double the, went right in a U-shape right here to our new hypercoolers. And the hypercoolers are doing the minus 100 C. So I think this is the first time we've done that, uh, the hypercoolers, so... But it's not that big of a deal. It's just pipe in, pipe out. So minus 10 got cooled. Now the loss is here. And we get a new recipe later on. It's slower. This is a 10 second craft. The other recipe is like 200. 200 and But uh, you don't lose. You lose less of your coolant. So slower but better. You know, I guess is how it goes. Thank you. All right, now we have here, I have, I'm have. i using these buffer chests. And if the bots, well, I'm gonna, and I'm going to set up the uh, space hub. I'm going to move it. I, that's just, uh, it's temporary right now. I'm going to do it a little better because I, I got to figure some stuff out. Or I had to, I had to kind of theory craft a little bit, but it's just a temporary hub. I'm side loading onto the belt here with a mini loader because it's faster than the fast inserter. That, so, most I'm trying to keep this from running. So, any extra steel that we get from unbarreling, I'm going to try and consume it in the science. But we'll see how it goes. I was getting an overrun on steel and rare metals up here. But, you know, it's one of those things I have to manage it. Hopefully, we'll get some, you know, more consumption and we'll send rockets up to replenish. But in the meantime, you want to you want to consume what's up here. You don't want overruns. Yeah, so it looks like some belts running. Yeah, I'm making belt. Yeah, as you can see, there you go. Okay, so cosmic water is coming in here. These are the two landing pads. This is the belt pad. This is the space science pad. And then cosmic water is coming in. And I have extra space science here from when I ripped everything up and bled it out. This is the replenishing pump here. And this is the uh, polished data storage. So what's going on here is the contaminated cosmic water comes over down this pipe. It's connecting to this right here. And it's also going, oh, oh yeah. Uh, so this is returning 99 out of 100 of the cosmic water. So we get a contaminated bio sludge in the, in the scrap. So this is what we had prior. So I've got over here, this one takes the contaminated bio sludge and gives us bio sludge and contaminated scrap. And so does this one, contaminated scrap. So this one in the center uh, the decontamination facility will process that contaminated scrap into scrap and uranium. And then we also get the uh, contaminated cosmic water, which I think I... Yeah, here it is right here. So it's popping out. So we got output, output, input. And then we've got an output here, which is going into this one here. So we got a lot of back and forth going on. Oh, and then I'm tanking up the bio sludge here for later use i might um i could i might put a barreling machine here and barrel it to get it out of here it's it's oil it turns out it can be turned into oil is why that's why i want to save it here's the landing pad for the rough data storage substrate whatever it's called and then we got our polished data there like i said now over here oh and then um we have scrap coming out of this machine here so this is the scrap belt and any scrap that comes out of any process gets connected to this belt here. Um, the polished data card goes to our machine learning or blank data cards now. And then that pops out. Now, uh, I'm side loading here for now, but I might, I'm going to do a splitter here with a priority for this belt. Because this is our return, return belt. Here is our machine learning data. There we go. And we got our coolant and the return so this is the return pipe as I, I don't know if i mentioned that it goes anything that returns the, the coolant returns on this pipe and it goes right right on in to be uh well yeah this is a return here 
So it comes on in and goes on uh, up into the tank here so that it'll get recooled. And there's a loss, like I said. Okay, so we got that. Now, oops, I'm in the machine. Um, I have a buffer chest here. And this is all the extra copper that I had lying around. And here's the copper ingots to copper machine to unpack. I hope that's enough. If it isn't, then I'll put another one over here. And I'll pop it in, you know, somewhere. However I need to do it. Okay, so that's done. So, yeah, machine learning is... Yeah, okay, this is the machine learning data card. There's a filter splitter going on to the scrap belt there then we have the junk data card refurbishing and we get a broken data card out of that as we remember as as we do um so the junk data card gets turned into scrap and that gets returned onto the belt there and then we have the minus 10 and the return of the coolant for the utility science and there's the um, prod one uh, all the belts coming in boop 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 and this one is a junk data card return here. So that's our first one. Oh, I want to do that. There we go. Now, oh, I could do a filter, but that's fine. Um, so what, uh, the next iteration of this, I'm going to spread these out by three, uh, so I can get two inserters and an underground belt. And I'm going to underground the belt out of here uh, or underground between the machines to get rid of this the junk data cards because it's a little too much spaghetti for me but it works and i'm okay with it you know uh so that's the return that's the output there that's an input for the cry night and up here i got four so five things okay we got the plasma stream coming in again i'll probably gap these out by another two get the junk out junk data cards out um via underground uh got productivity this is the three coming in here so that's the production science what that and this is all we need this crap for if if this if any one of these items is used by more than one thing then i put it in a landing pad over on the other side otherwise it's just bring it up and you know all that okay now uh so we got the ingots we got the prod mod uh data cards and all that other stuff there we go okay so that's it the rebuild so i like oh, i love these pipes it looks so cool. And, and, you know, you can't be perfect on everything. Like, you know, this one's here. Um, you know, you got to do... You, I have to do undergrounds because there's a pipe here. Depends on what pipe I'm using and all that. But, I, I you know, I try to be consistent as much as possible. Because I want it to look nice, you know. Okay. So, Astrometrics. This is a real pain in the butt, man. Oh, my God. Look at all these belts going everywhere. So... Over here, I'm bringing in the beryllium plate, or, well, the ingot. And this really actually should be an ingot. There we go. So the ingot comes in, and it feeds the... This is how we get um, double the blank data observation frame by adding the beryllium plate. And it, I think it removes steel. So steel, maybe heat shield. I think it... I don't know. I don't think it's heat shield. And so we get 10 blank observation frames. And then we got to bring in coal, glass, and light oil. So that's why I got the coal now. And it's one rocket because uh, it's a general purpose rocket because I need it for other things. You know, as well, you know, the uh, life support. So I'll bring in two things. And then um, that gets exported on this belt here. And, oh, I just realized something. I have to get this stuff piped up here. Um, no big deal. I'll get that going that way. Yeah, I forgot about that. I would have noticed it. There we go. Unfortunately, I got to go this way with the return. Can I make that? No. Okay, so I'll have to go like this. Like so. It's easier just to do... Well, I. you know what? Let's do this. I'm going to get a niner. I really do like these pipes, but... So I was thinking, I don't know if the mod dev watches my series, probably not. But um, I, I don't know if he has plans for this, but I'd love to see a three straight. Uh, three, five, seven straight. I'd also like to see a nine and a 15 
uh, I, I want an 11 and a 13. And I'd like to have every one of them have a port in the center and every one to be a straight pipe. So every, you know, there's a variant for each one. But I don't understand why he didn't do an 11 and a 13. I really would, I don't understand that. Just go all the way, cover all the odd numbers, you know. Because then I can, you know, work with the machines with those. And then when it, when it comes to doing a pipe bus, I'd like to be able to do the, you know, the, the non-junction ones, the straights. So, uh, I don't know. Hopefully he's listening. If not, you know, I, if you go to the Discord and you say something, then people are always like poo-pooing your ideas. But, uh, yeah, hopefully he's listening. Because these are really freaking awesome. <laughs> so, let me get this uh, going. Oh, I'm going to do a, a 15, maybe. Let's see about a 9. I'll do a 9 for now. There we go. All right, so this is the frames that exports out this way. I had to use long arms on these. I have each of the ups of the light in a line so I can bring the coolant in and out. And then I do, I'm do i doing this here where I'm exporting directly onto the belt. So it looks pretty cool, actually. This is the beryllium plate. It has to go through here. Luckily, I was able to span the machine. So that goes all the way down, and it has to, and I side load here. And then uh, we'll get through, go through this, but it, I need... We need beryllium all the way at the end of this build for F's sake. So there you go. <laughs> There's a lot going on at that end. So over here, yeah. So we got each light uh, frame and then we get the data card. So we also have an export of scrap and junk. So what I have to do here is I think I'm going to loop up this way. Um, and oops. What I have to do is split right here. And I have to do a scrap one. There it is, scrap. Yeah, because we're getting uh we're getting scrap and the junk data card out of that. Oh, and I just realized something. I have junk coming out of here too. So I think what I'm gonna do is pop out instead of dragging I already have a belt going out. So I'm going to underground this like so, pull this out, and then I'm going to combine it with this belt right here. There we go. Okay, so the junk card is going to go this way, and then uh, I can pull this belt up now. Because that's a lot of belt that I'm like, man, this is taking forever. Let me just fly here. Boom. So this here. All right, let's go through this uh, some more. Uh, make sure we got everything. So all the light data, uh, all the frames are coming out. And each one of these machines is getting that their specific light. And, oh, it needs a blank data card. I forgot about that. Oh, that's easy to do, though. Um, wow, I forgot another thing. All right, well, I decided to tuck this belt in between here and move this belt down for the scrap and the junk data cards. Undergrounded here, did a little loop like so. Um, the problem is I need to curve the belt because these useless belts, they don't span any more. Otherwise, I would have put an inserter you know, like that. So I have to dip down and then I could probably, you know, it would look better. I did this. Looks better that way. Doesn't look like a non-professional did it. <laughs> okay, so we got the blank data card. It outputs junk. No, oh, and and what's interesting is that there's a different percentage. So it's 90% 9% with scrap. The scrap is different on every one of these. And also the visibility data is 98 and 1 on that. And then this one here is 85, 14, 10. Pretty cool. Well, that was kind of interesting. I like that little variation there. So once the uh, cards come out, um, as you can see, I've got the filter inserters here. 
And this one is near. This one is, f oh, wait a minute. That's near. How did that happen? That's far. I want that far. I want that near. And then this one here, I gotta make sure, I don't know what side it's gonna output on because all three cards go into this machine right here. And it kicks out the astrometric data, three of them. Okay, so it's three to three, which is nice. This stupid thing needs all three plus the one. And I'm like, are you kidding me? So we have to import all the data here. So that's what this, these belts are curving over here. And this one's gonna output that fourth card but I don't know if I need near or far because I, I don't, I, I'm not sure. I'd have to test it and see what side this is gonna be on. I could do it, but I, I'll just let it run and I'll fix it. So these things here require all four cards and they kick out the Insight or astro, Astrometric Catalog. Now, what's weird about the catalog, and I just realized I forgot something. Okay, this catalog is used here Okay, and I forgot, oh, I gotta connect these here, so I gotta go here. Yeah, there's some updates to the, uh, there, this is easy to fix. There we go. Okay, and that's done. Uh, all these are, and this one isn't tied in, crap. Oh, here, so I go here, there we go. Okay, that's good. So the coolant is going into these, and then these are now tied in. And, the, and this is all going out, yeah, like I said over here. Okay. Now, yeah, this one requires the astrometric catalog, kicks out the astrometric insight. Oh, I did change my autosave to every 30 minutes. I did remember, <laughs> finally. <laughs> so we got the insight coming out, but it's needed for the, 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 uh, or no, I'm sorry. The um, the catalog is needed for the insight. The astrometric insight is needed for the significant data. This thing requires all of it as well. <laughs> so the significant and astrometric and insight. So I have to export the insight here. I'm direct feeding the significant data here. And then I have to output the junk data as we noticed there. So yeah, that's going that way. Is that, yeah, that's connecting there. And yeah, so it's this is needed for two things, this one and this. And in, what's this one? Yeah, that's direct feed there. And then we got the output of the, now, once this starts to run, we actually get our cards back. We get 32 from here and then we get uh, two, so 34. Now. I don't know how that's gonna balance out, but this doesn't kick in until later. So it's possible that I could feed these back in once it's seeded. Pretty cool stuff. So um, let's see, what's my, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy this thing. This is a nightmare. I mean, it's fun to, I love these uh, builds that are kind of really intricate. What's that? Oh, okay, that's the science. Oh, I got my little rocket. <laughs> that's funny, whoops. I accidentally press space bar. So I'm gonna plop this thing like right here, I think. And um, let's see, I'm gonna run into that if I do this. That splitter wasn't supposed to be there. Uh, I can underground that, I think. So I think I'm okay. Well, I can move it up here. Yeah, I can always drop that pipe. Okay, I like this better. And I want uh, lots of room. Maybe I can go here. I'll line up to that. There we go. Boom. Oh, I do have more space platforms. Get rid of that. I do have more space platforms. There we go. Oh, come on. It's weird how there's a, a bot delay. And I find it interesting. Because I've never noticed it on vanilla. Alright, I'll rip this up here. All right, one thing I forgot about is power. <laughs> oh, it's not going to look good here. All right, got my power coverage. Looks good. Um, yeah, I had the, these inserters are really far down, so 
I had to drop a substation there. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. Let's connect this baby. There we go. And now, get rid of that. Coal can go in, glass can go in, and we have frames. Oh, those are cool. Look at them go. Oh yeah, that's gonna create a, look at that. That's a lot of frames. <laughs> this machine's fast. Oh my God. A stack inserter can't even keep up with it. Oh, wow. What is this? 10 second time. Oh, it's one every second. That's why. There you go. We have it! Look! We have it! That was need is the blank data cards. Wow, these are slow. Look at them go! How fast are these things? Five second craft. Okay. Oh, yeah. We got plenty of lenses here. Look at that. Fine. Oh, look at this, how they're all jammed up over here. That's so cool looking. That is neat. Oh, this one's kind of inconsistent. Oh, no, you can see it. There it is. There we go. Nice. All right, now we need the blank data cards, which is right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and flow those. I'm going to wait on these here. And there they go. This is so much fun. Yeah, it was pretty tricky to get this build going. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look. Look at how cool that is. Oh, we got a card. We got a card. There they go. Broop. Look at them all. Oh, that's so exciting. I really like this mod for the, you know, the creativity. Yeah, this will be interesting. 
So this one's gonna, oh, there it goes, it's going. This is pretty fast. Three second craft. Oh yeah, and then I gotta figure out, well, what's this? Okay, those are going on the outside, that makes sense. Oh, there we go, look, it's on the inside. There we go. So that'll work out. Yeah, it worked out. Didn't have to do anything special there. So we're getting some in here. That one's working. Okay, now, what else do I need here? Okay, we're waiting on the insight now. We're getting close. And then, yeah, everything is up and running here. So there we go. I, I got to make sure I got everything tied in, though. But uh, I want to make sure that we get the insight here. There it is. This is the K2 stuff. Now, that one, the, where's the, oh, the insight's going here. There we go. Yeah, I'm like, how's this getting out of here? And there we go. There we go. Wow, this is slow. 10 seconds. That kicks out the blanks, which is here. Oh, and then this has to go over here. Well, there we go. Significant data. Finally, it took a while. Uh, so I, I would observe this build and make sure that it all works. There it is. Oh, and then I forgot to tie. These are blank data cards. And I didn't realize that they were going to return the blanks. Look at all these. So I had to spaghetti a belt up to where the blank data cards are going. Oh, there. Oh, oh. There it is. Oh, I got junk data cards on here. Oh, no. Wait a minute. Oh. Oh, I got to put a filter on this one here. So these are going to be... The astrometric data one. Where are you? Here it is. Okay, cool. Okay. So I have to go get that junk data. Yeah, I didn't realize, you know, it's there's so much going on. So many inputs and outputs for these builds. So here's the belt. I had to spaghetti this up. Uh, I had to go underground, underground. I figured that, yeah, and I had to go around this pipe here. <laughs> So this is side loading now, the junk turn, side loading, and then it's going up here. There we go. So there's a big buffer of data cards that has to be replenished. Holy cripes, look at this. Looks like I'll have to do more here. Yeah, I might have to add more of these. Um, Can I? Yeah, I can pipe out of here and go down into another one. So... That's fine. Now, apparently, you know, according to Helmod, I don't need many of these. I thought I did. I think when I first designed the uh, the first two, I think I well, I put them all in one tab, but um, I didn't know about the. I don't think I did the return on that. So we'll have to see how this works. Uh, but yeah, we're getting a return on it. You know there. Okay, so let's see what we got over here. Oh, wow. They're really chewing up the card. They're uh, the frames. That's interesting how this one's running much faster. What is this? 5.8. Oh, wow. 5.4. Okay, it's all different. 5.09. What the heck with these weird numbers? <laughs> I think it's cool, though. It's pretty cool. And these are all the same. Yeah, five. Okay. Now, it's overbuilt, basically, based on... You know, it's like one extra machine. Or one... A fraction of an extra. Um, yeah, the problem with this is the significant data. With the Astrometrics Insight. Because it takes a while. And you can see this one isn't running 100%. Uh, I think that's but You know, because of hell mod, you know. So, Helmod can get you into a tr little bit of trouble as far as, like, the underestimating and overestimating kind of stuff I was talking about. And here's another issue right here. See, once this buffer's all up, and that's a long belt, that's why I wanted to move this, the labs down here. Okay, how are we doing here? We only got a couple. Look at the heck. <laughs> I think I'm just going to do one lab for now. 
because I'd like to get this research done here. So let me get my lab uh, lab and prod here. Um, it's over here. Oh, and I got to do this crap here too. That's fine. All right, I'm going to set this up really quick. Let's fire right up. There we go. We are doing research. Oh, that's right. Oh, crap. I got to do... I got to get the uh, rocket tech card. Okay, so here's what I was going to do. I can't believe I forgot. I could do this, like, right here. And then I can shoot up all the sciences like this. Let's see, is that... Uh, yeah, it's on the power there. So all the tech cards will go in here. So let's go... I'm going to grab the um, yeah, the uh, rocket data here. Yeah. Rocket data! And we're researching! <laughs> wow, that's slow. So it's 12 at 60. Oh, that's why. Okay. All right, let's do this here. Put my bots on. There we go. Oh, there we go. Get that kicking on there. Oh, look, it ran out. <laughs> huh? Well, so I'm going to, oh, I might as well put all the sciences in here. So let me do that. Boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. Get them all in there. All right, cool. Ah, still doing... Okay, we got 67%. Let's see. Are we getting any science on here? This takes a long time. I'm telling you, man. When I'm looking at that thousand... Oh, now I'm really crying. There we go. Yeah, it, this is going to be a bear. Holy crap. There's two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and um, by adding the beryllium plate, I'm actually, yes, I'm actually doubling. Look, asteroid discovered. Ephraimus, Ephorius, belt two. Let's check that out. So we, we can type U, and then it brings up Helmod. I think that's up here. Here it is. <gasps> Look, uranium. Ooh. Whoa, check it out. Oh, let's get rid of that. Oh, look! Oh, I thought that was a spaceship. We got methane ice here. Barrel. Methane ice. This is a... Ooh. There's a lot of uh, mater um, asteroids here. Uh, where Now, where are we in the grand scheme of things here? Lots of uranium. Now, I'm wondering if this... See how it's a circle? I'm wondering if that's what I have to go as around in a circular pattern when I'm in the view, you know? There it is. What's this say? 1500 orbit zero. Okay. This is a really dense one. There's some uranium here. Not much. I don't know what they're talking about. So, yeah, I'm wondering if maybe the the it's an asteroid belt and it goes up at an angle like this, maybe? Because I was thinking about this. Because there's a lot of nothing down here, you know? So maybe it's in a circle. It, you know, that would be pretty cool if you did that. More barrel. There's not much in, in the way of resources. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how big these surfaces are based on, like, if we go here. See, it's got a dash there. There's no circumference. So I'm kind of curious what they mean by that. Um, what is this? 700 meters size. We've got water, ice, copper, methane ice. So there's got to be a lot of uranium here, you know. All right, let's go back here. Let's take a look at the... Oh, what is this? 12 at 60? So it triggers random zone discovery when researched. Okay. And why is it still at 12? I thought it went up. Oh, it was 11 before, I guess. Okay. What do we got here? Survivability. Increase the percentage of parts that can be re recovered. I think what I'm going to do, this is reduces the amount of cargo lost. Oh, 
Yeah, let's do that one. And then reduces the chance that rockets fail. Yeah, we want that one. And then I guess we'll do the percentage one. Okay, cool. So I wanted to get that kicked off. All right, let's take a look at this. Uh, there's the iron stick. That's 10. I'm glad it's low numbers. So we'll knock that one out. That's the iron plate or iron stick plus beryllium plate. There's not much to run, which is really weird. Oh, here's one. Oh, okay. I can do this one, which is the S. This one. Oh, this is what I was talking about. It's a uh, 200 second craft time. We can speed it up with speed modules, which is probably what I'll do. I think I already have them sped up as it is. So we get it's 500 in 499 out. And that's only if we need to replenish. So, and it says down here, temperature, um, oh wait, it says re, uh, repeated cooling and heating of thermal fluid causes de degradation. Slower cooling results in redu reduced loss. Uh, so the 200 second craft time equates to less loss. So we'll run that one, 500, ugh. Okay, this is a cool one here. So now microwave telescope, this is how we get the other light um, things. So we have, in order to build it, that's the stuff there. We need arrow frame pole. And it says a huge telescope that detects microwaves and the cosmic microwave background. Cool. So it's 10 at 60. We'll kick that one off. Now we have an x-ray and that's the stuff to build it. And then we need, oh, we need multispectral mirrors for these. Yeah. And then I think the multispectral mirror is used in the next science, which is the energy. So that way, what I'll have to do is create those and send them up to here. I have one machine doing it. Yeah, that'll have to be the case. We get scrap out of that too. Uh, all right. So we'll run that one there. And then, ooh, this one's cool. Look at this one. Ooh. All right, big electric motor. I'll run this off screen here, but let's take a look at it. Gravimetrics facility. Oh, that's so cool. Each one is different. And then this one is analyzes and simulates gravitational disturbances. That is very cool. Now, uh, let's see. Oh, there it is right there. I don't know what this does, but... Oh, and then we got a jetpack. Oh, we got jetpack. Oh, I can finally get the cryo gun. Oh, dear. Oh. Why can't I run this one? Oh, what's this one here? How'd I miss this? Oh, I got to research these. Oh, that's why. Oh, okay. All right. Well, next episode, we'll queue up some more research. And I, yeah, I got all this queued up here. So it's 32. This is going to take a while. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we got astrometrics. I'm excited. The, the next episode, what I'll do, I think we'll try to get the next science pack up and running. But we'll run research and then, yeah, I, and I've got all the stuff kind of crafted out, theory crafted. I'll have to do another rocket bank. So I'll build that off screen because we're going to have to bring up U-235. Yeah, that's going to be fun. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next episode. Peace out.